Welcome back to Squawk on the Street. Let's bring back in Citadel founder and CEO Ken Griffin, as well as Eva Moskowitz, who was our host today. She is the founder and CEO of Charter School Network Success Academy, also the author of the upcoming book, A Plus Parenting, which I definitely need to read. Uh, Eva, first of all, thank you for having us here oh, today. Great. I know Ken is, is a big believer and a big fan of your work and what you've built here. So for those that aren't familiar with, with Success Academy, tell us about what it is. Sure. We opened five weeks ago with 21,500 students, kindergarten through 12th grade. 94% of our students are black and brown. 16% are special needs. About 82% live below the poverty line. And yet uh, we are educating them up to a very, very high standard. In fact, our kids outperform kids in the affluent suburbs on the state tests, on AP exams. We have a six-year record of 100% of our graduates going to four-year colleges. I mean, the track record is amazing. Ken, how did you get, get involved with success? So I've been involved with Robin Hood in New York for years. And Robin Hood's been a, a big fan of, yes. of charter schools in New York City and of success in particular. And then Dan Loeb, who runs Third Point, is, is certainly part of the EVA fan club. <laughs> and he, he made a real point to making sure that I came to learn more about the, just literally the miracle that happens here at Success Academies. What, what are the takeaways more broadly, Eva, about what you're doing here and how to scale that and, and broaden that across America where, I mean, you've seen some of these, these new statistics. It's not good, and especially post-COVID, eighth grade reading is at a two-decade low. I think math is at a three-decade low. What do we take from this? Well, I think we have to uh, take a step back and fundamentally rethink the service of education. Uh, we are not getting the basics right in America, even though we spend more money on education than any country around the globe. Uh, take something like reading. For 20 years, we canceled phonics. Any educator worth their salt knows that an evidence-based program is essential. We're not teaching kids to count in kindergarten anymore. That's very, very basic. Uh, the problem is really one of political will. It's not one of we don't know how to educate children. We actually do know how to educate children. We're just not giving them what they are entitled to and deserve. And I think it has major implications for America's global competitiveness. Uh, it is a tremendous drag on our system when we have poorly educated uh, kids, and we don't really want a society, I hope not, where we have educational haves and have-nots. You said it's political will, and I know that you do spend some time you know, fighting the teachers' union, for instance. In some of these bigger cities with changing policies, is that what the biggest obstacle is, do you think, to, to expanding what you're doing? Well, I think the unions are one important obstacle. Uh, they influence all educational policy, and there isn't really another side Imagine if the kids had a union, things might be a little different. But uh, kids and families don't really have the level of political influence that the unions have. But I think it would be unfair to sort of say that is the whole problem. We have uh, public policies in this country that make no sense. We have something called categorical funding. Uh, I think one of the most important jobs I do as CEO is resource allocation. You can't do that if you're a principal or a superintendent. The state determines all of the categories of funding, and you have no ability to meet the needs of your children in front of you.